Hello, everybody. Um, we've got a couple people on and we'll get started. Just so you know, I will be recording this. So if you have any questions, we'd um, prefer if you just handle those through chat. Let's get started here. Welcome to Web Tips for Windshuttle. We are Clear Process Solutions, and this presentation will be by me, Mark Blensky. Everybody should be muted. And um, if you have any questions, instead of um, using your audio through your computer or your cell phone, just go ahead and type them. We'll be monitoring the chat and um, make sure any questions are answered. And we really appreciate you coming today and hope you uh, learn something new. At CPS, our goal is to um, take mundane work and um, help automate it through wind shuttle and other um, digital transformation methods and make your job easier. Part of how we do that is teaching things like this through uh, wind shuttle tips, and we hope you learn something new. If there's something that you would like to have discussed, a topic that you'd like taught or examples that you'd need to see, we're open for ideas and always looking to uh, improve these kind of presentations. So please go ahead and share those with us through email or chat. My name is Mark Plensky. I have worked with SAP uh, for about 15 years, a little bit over that. Primarily, I've done the configuration and the ABAP coding within SAP. And I joined CPS the beginning of this year, working with Windshuttle Studio and Composer and a couple other tools. And I just really enjoy it. I help gather requirements and uh, solve the problems. And I see a tremendous um, use cases for Windshuttle and getting data into SAP. It's a very valuable way of doing it. In my previous work, I did a lot of, a lot of the coding, did a lot of um, handling of the data myself, and Windshuttle just makes it a lot easier. Today's topic will be recording long text with Windshuttle Studio. And the purpose, as you can see there, is to create long text fields when creating a new material. We'll be using transaction MM01. The short description is stored in SAP in the table MARA, M-A-K-T-X. It has a limit of 40 characters. And oftentimes, a company will need to do store longer, uh, more descriptive texts. And within SAP, that's actually stored in a different location it's not stored at the table level and getting the data in and out within sap can kind of be tricky but with wind Channel, it makes it super easy so we're going to record that there's a couple other use cases for this as well where um, an example might be if you're not creating a new material you might just want to update the long texts for uh, existing materials and you would just record the script using mm02 and we can talk through that a little bit further as needed so the beginning of this demo here, we will be recording the Windshuttle script for updating the long text field in SAP. So we'll just be creating the, uh, the script. And then after that, we will review the script and map the proper fields. We will ensure that the script looks right and that the map fields are set for uploading. We'll save all the data, make sure everything's okay. And then finally, we'll test it in both uh, regular test and in debug and see the differences in how those work. So here goes step one. Um, just so that there's no complications, I have pre-recorded some of these steps here um, so that uh, we don't have any problems. And I also have the uh, systems up and can pull them in so uh, I can handle um, live questions or anything that you have. But for this first part, I, I've recorded it going into SAP and we'll demonstrate it right now. This is a screen that hopefully everyone's familiar to. We're going to start with a recorded transaction. So I will click off the video here. We're going to create from SAP recording transaction MM01. We don't need to do anything with the change mode and we'll start the recording. Our dev SAP system can sometimes be a little bit uh, slow. So bear with us here for just a second.
Now, when we get in here, this is a transaction, whether you're familiar with it or not, we, there's just some data we'll have to fill out here. I'm gonna create a HAWA material type and um, add a reference material. So it pulls in the additional fields. Uh, just as a reminder to everybody, when you're recording a script within uh, SAP, it, a lot of times it's, it's quicker for us to just click the one we want here. But in reality, the, the recording actually needs to clear everything and um, select the one you want. So what I did at the beginning here was I went down here and I cleared everything just to make sure that I hadn't didn't have any kind of uh, uh, favorite or v variant or anything saved where it's a little bit different and that will cause problems in the recording. So again, start by doing this and highlighting the basic data one. And here I will be changing the short description to capture that field for the uh, script. Labeling it something easy that I can find once the recording is done. Go in for the long text. Identify it very easily for the recording. And the last part here is I will select basic data two and save it. This is a very easy script. And then we get back to this um, where, where it handles the recording, saves it. And then it looks like something like this. It, again, it defaults to the basic view here and we'll be doing most of our uh, demonstration here in the expert view. So at this point, we have now recorded the initial script and we are going to review it, map the proper fields, ensuring that the script looks right and uh, map everything for uploading. And then we'll save our data. So step two here, um, I, I like to be in the expert view just to see all the additional fields. And let's see what we have here. When we do things with scripts and passing data into and out of SAP, it's always a good idea to start with the run log so that you can see any kind of error messages and um, anything that SAP returns to us, especially the success messages. You, uh, we can see here that that was the, uh, the script, the short text. Sorry about that, I restarted on accident. Here's the run log. We'll grab the short material description. And because we named it easily, it's very easy to spot within uh, the expert view. And the long text is always at the bottom. Grab that and put it down here. And then because we're going to be testing in just a minute, we'll name it something so that we know um, it was updated properly. And the cool thing about the long text is it's not limited to the 40 characters like material description is for short text. This can be as long as we want. It can be multiple pages. So I went all out here and made it clear that it'd be multiple lines, no problem. And with these scripts, we'll save them, give them a descriptive title and file name according to your company's naming standards. In this case, I just went really simple. So it's a demo long text. Save that and we're good. The Again, this is a simple one and more of the time will be spent in the actual demo of how it works. So we're already on to step three, which is test the script that it works and then it updates SAP. This is the fun part that we've worked so hard to get to. This one's very easy, but normally this, when you're recording a normal or a more difficult script, this is the exciting part to see how well you did. So again, we will, we have the description. 
short description here and then the long description and column A will tell us whether the material is created successfully or there's some kind of error. So let's see how our script did. Because we didn't change very much, it should work very well. We, we weren't changing any of the uh, material types or anything like that. We just wanted to prove that this works. So we click on test run, it goes out using our login information. The moment of truth, which because I pre-recorded it, I happen to know that the moment of truth will be, I get to keep my job, I got it right. We have material 4051 created properly. We will type it in there and go verify that the short and long text appear. Their short text goes here, exactly what we were expecting. And then the long text, which should be multiple lines, not under the basic data here. And we see it's uploaded properly. Now we're going to do the de debug demo. There's, whenever you do the debug there, you often see things a little bit from a different perspective. And it's just a great way to verify that everything looks right. Let's see here. I always like to run the script in debug mode to watch how it behaves in SAP and see if we have any issues. It's just a great way to, to see what's going on, especially if we're not getting successful messages on the way back, that is the way to figure out what, what the problem is. So again, it's just the debug one here and let's watch how, how this works for us. As I hope every one of you is familiar with the debug, it'll pop up here and just walk us step by step through the script exactly how we recorded it, filling in whatever data that we had we had changed. So we generally move the uh, box up here out of the way so we can see everything within here. We should see the short text goes there. And interestingly, when you're doing the recording, the long text doesn't look like it works in debug. Like you didn't get to see it there, but when we go into the material that was successfully created, we can see it was actually there. Again, in debug, we didn't get to see this little portion of it right here. It, that the very first couple times I recorded it, it threw me off because um, not when I recorded it, when I was testing it in debug, it, it didn't look like it was working right. But sure enough, when you go out to the material, you see that it's there. I've done this several times and a couple of the times, um, not a couple of times, one of the times I had a problem and the long text wasn't working. And what I did was I, uh, had recorded this previously and it was as easy as fixing it in that situation was as easy as um, going into expert view from another of the scripts and copying the line and pasting it into the one that wasn't working and deleting the incorrect ones, saving the whole thing and it worked great. That's the only problem I've ever had but most of the time it's it's worked on the first shot and it updates properly. This was for recording with MM01, which is the create. I could see companies also needing to update existing materials with um, having a spreadsheet of material numbers and new descriptions. I can think of companies that, that I've been at where they've um, changed product lines or, or something and they wanted to 
um, identify a whole bunch of materials at the same time as being obsolete or outdated. So in that case, you could record this using transaction MM02, which is to change a material, have a column with the materials here and the new description here. And it, it'll work very, very quickly, very easily. And I can think of one other example that I've used this with where the company had a fairly um, complex set of rules, how they wanted to name their materials. So we recorded the script just like this and the script worked. And then within um, Composer, we used some JavaScript to create the description the way they wanted it, where certain fields went in the front and um, for example, pounds, might be changed to you know the uh, pound sign or inches might be changed to the inch sign so all, the, all these rules created um, a fairly long description that was much more than the 40 bytes that the short text holds and then we were able to upload that into sap and it, it worked great so although i recorded it as a create material to show that the uh, short and long text could be handled differently the MM02 works just as well. That was today's discussion and demo. It was hopefully a very simple one and um, one that can be very powerful depending on how it's used and when it's needed. The point is from within SAP, the short text and long text are stored at different places in different tables. And getting the long text can be more complex, but you wouldn't even know it based off of how easy WindShuttle makes uploading the texts. So it's definitely a great way to um, get data into SAP very, very quickly. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. And otherwise, this was an easy example and hopefully um, you learned something. If there's a, a a demo or a topic that you would like covered, we would love to hear from you and we would love to um, teach it. If you have a question about something, I imagine there's quite a few people out there that are using Windshield that might have the same question. So it's a great way for us to find out the needs of people and then um, share it with a lot of people at once. So go ahead and you can either type it in the chat or email us and we will get to the contact information. Before we get to the contact information, we have some information about upcoming things. Next month's Web Tips is about uh, Wind Shuttle Composer. It's advanced form debugging and troubleshooting. Composer can be a complicated um, but powerful tool. And we will be teaching how to debug problems and figure out what the uh, issue is when things go wrong. So that will be Thursday, July 18th at the same time. Lean Utopia will be coming this fall, 2019. The dates yet to be determined. That will include discussions and demos around emerging digital process transformation technologies. You can learn more there at um, leanutopia.com. And again, if you have any ideas for web tips topics, uh, you're welcome to send those to info at clearprocesssolutions.com and we will um, take care of that. And finally, uh, we work closely with Windshuttle and offer uh, comprehensive solution care supplements to help any size company uh, with their Windshuttle needs and their data transformation. So uh, we consider ourselves experts at this and have solved a lot of problems and hope we can help many more companies. So give us, reach out to us if you have any questions or problems, and uh, hopefully we have solutions that can solve your company's problems. Thank you a lot for your time and uh, we appreciate it. See you next month.